this is a big day with the presentation of Europol EU SOCTA 2021 report, the flagship report on serious and organized crime. Let me also thank Francesca and Eduardo for welcoming us in Lisbon. It's always nice to, to be here. The EU SOCTA report is published every four years. It represents the peak of knowledge, analysis and law enforcement experience. I should say that it's much more than a report. It's a guide for action because we need to do more. The 2021 edition makes it clear. Organized crime is one of the biggest threats facing our society, rightly mentioned also by Katrin de Bol recently. It's a growing threat, a violent threat, contract killings, shootings, bombings, arsons, kidnappings, torture and intimidation. Criminals kill innocent victims in the crossfire, murder journalists and lawyers in direct attacks on our democracies. Criminal networks increasingly use violence in Europe to reach their goals. And that goal is in one word, money. In one year, criminals made almost 140 billion euros in criminal money in the European Union. 1% of the EU GDP, more than the GDP of some of our member states. Money that criminals use to pay for middlemen, strawmen and hitmen. Money that we need for hospitals, vaccines and recovery. Organized crime undermines our economy, society and the rule of law. 60% of criminal networks engaged in corruption. 80% of networks control or infiltrate legitimate businesses. A parallel underground financial system enables an underground criminal marketplace. Organized crime is a flexible threat. Criminals adapt to the pandemic with great ease by scamming people and selling fake or non-existent cures. Criminals exploit technology, commit crimes online and leave traces online. Trade criminal goods and services on the dark web, pay and launder profits with cryptocurrencies, hide their crimes with encryption. And organized crime is a cross-border threat. 70% of criminal networks are active in more than three member states. The publication of this report could not be more timely. In two days, on Wednesday, I will present my strategy on organized crime. This strategy deals with many of the issues raised in this report. At the heart of our new strategy is law enforcement cooperation. Criminals ignore national borders and European borders. We can only fight organized crime if we work closely together in Europe. And we will build on our successes. To start with, Europol. Europol is the cornerstone of EU law enforcement cooperation. Already in December, I launched proposals to boost the mandate of Europol so it can support law enforcement even better. Second, EMPACT, the European Multidisciplinary Platform Against Criminal Threats. Within this framework, member states carry out 200 joint operational actions against organized crime every year. Very successful operations, leading to many arrests, boosting cooperation across the board. I want to move Europe from an ad hoc police cooperation to permanent police partnership. I will present this year an EU police cooperation code, streamlining all our existing tools into one coherent and modern rulebook. We must improve information sharing in day-to-day -day policing. Law enforcement can now already check with other member states if they have information on DNA, fingerprints or number plates. We should simplify and speed up this information exchange 
I will come forward with new proposals already this year, and I will consider possibilities to also run checks for facial images, driving licenses, police records, and ballistics. I will update rules to make better use of travel information, advanced passenger information people give at check-in when they travel, to help identify criminals at an early stage. Of course, making sure we always respect fundamental rights. We will scale up the fight against threats, new and old. Threats that you have clearly outlined in the report today. We need to counter the ra racing tide of fake vaccines and sham medicines and need to address counterfeiting, also being prioritized by the Portuguese presidency. Last year, Europol coordinated the very successful Operation Shield, leading to the capture of 73 million worth of fake or misused medicine, including 33 million medical devices. And we will fight environmental crimes, a growing crime in many member states. We will fight drug trafficking. The drug trade dominates organized crime and is a major source of income for criminals. Already last year, the member states adopted our new EU drugs strategy. Lisbon is an important center for drugs prevention and fighting drug trafficking. This afternoon, I will visit the European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction, which provides policymakers with the information they need to tackle the harmful effects of drugs. And I will visit the Maritime Analysis and Operations Centre Narcotics, in which six EU member states and the UK work together to fight drug smuggling in the high seas. Their work is more important than ever. Just last month, law enforcement captured the first ever so-called narco submarine, a nine meter long boat capable of transporting two tons of drugs. We will fight migrant smuggling. Smugglers abuse the dreams of desperate people of a better life. Increasingly, smuggling networks are putting people's lives at risk to maximize profit. Soon, I will present a new EU action plan to combat migrant smuggling. And we will fight child sexual abuse. This is actually my number one priority. I presented a strategy last year and I want Parliament and Council to agree on emergency short-term legislation so internet companies can continue to report child sexual abuse. But I'm also preparing a permanent legislation because we need good, clear, long-term rules to protect children. And we will fight the trafficking of human beings, one of the worst forms of organized crime. A crime especially against women. 72% of victims of trafficking in human beings are women, mostly forced to sell their bodies, forced into prostitution. This is also a crime against children. A quarter of victims are children, most of them girls. It's a crime against EU citizens. Half of the victims of trafficking in human beings are EU citizens. It's a crime against people that treats people as a commodity, exploiting their bodies or their labor. On Wednesday, I will present a strategy against human trafficking to fight traffickers and protect victims. To fight all forms of organized crime, we must do several things. We must make sure that crime doesn't pay and that criminal assets do not infiltrate our legal economy and society. Today, only 1% of criminal assets is confiscated. We will step up the fight against money laundering and improve asset recovery. We must follow the money to catch criminals in financial investigations. We must fight corruption. Especially now, we are mobilizing public money for healthcare and recovery. Not a euro, not a cent of this money must end up in the pockets of criminals. We need a high-tech law enforcement 
to fight tech-savvy criminals. 85% of evidence is digital. Criminals commit crimes online and leave traces online. We want to, want to make it easier for law enforcement to access electronic evidence across borders. When service providers delete data, they potentially delete clues to countless crimes. We will look at possibilities for data retention so that evidence doesn't unintentionally disappear at the touch of a button. Obviously, these measures must be fully in line with fundamental rights. We must also deal with encryption. Criminal, criminals hide their crimes with encryption that's easy to use but impossible to break. And we must find solutions. When police have lawful access to information, they must also be able to get actual access to that information. Europol's new decryption facility will already help member states. We will support research and innovation in policing, for example, artificial intelligence, and support training in using technology, for example, to carry out digital investigations. I want to end by thanking Europol for this excellent report. It once again confirms Europol's essential role in supporting crime fighting in Europe. I would like to congratulate you, Katrin, and your team for this achievement. And I would like to thank all member states, EU agencies, international organizations, and all other partners for contributing to this report. A report that outlines the main criminal threats facing Europe today. It will guide everyday police and law enforcement cooperation. It will guide our long-term cooperation in the next impact cycle. And it will guide the Commission's policies and proposals. This is called the Europol's flagship report, and not for nothing. A flagship is not only the biggest and most important ship. It's also the leading ship that shows the direction of travel. And we can certainly plot our course by Europol's ass assessment of serious and organized crime. Thank you. First, let me say something also on, on corruption. Uh, every year, uh, there's a new instrument that the Commission will publish uh, a rule of law report, and we published the first one uh, last fall. And there we also have a, a section on corruption for every member state. So that is uh, where we also assess the corruption situation in, in all member states. Uh, According to this uh, situation and, at the, and this death at the, um, uh, at the airport and what's being uh, done after that, I think that's also better for uh, Eduardo Cabrita to, to answer to that question. Question, yeah. If it's Hello. on soccer related, yeah, please go related ahead. Related -ish. Uh, my name is Catherine Demoni. I'm a correspondent for Reuters News Agency. Um, Commissioner, you spoke a lot about organized crime, about external groups committing crime within the European Union. My question is, when criminality infiltrates our police forces, our security forces, our border control, my colleagues here in Portugal just mentioned the case of an Ukrainian man that died in the airport here in Lisbon at the hands of the border control. So my question is, what is the European Union doing to tackle the crime within people who are part of the system, which is something that we've been seeing? And then the other question about migration. The Internal Affairs Minister referred about the migrants coming from Greece. Um, Portugal has only received 72 of the 500 migrants it pledged to receive. So my question is, when are they arriving? Is this because of the pandemic that is taking a bit too long? Um, you know, are they still coming this year? When can we expect them to arrive in Portugal? Thank you. Don't know if you would like to reply to the question. Otherwise, yeah, please go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, first let me say that the EU competence is cross-border and serious crimes. Uh, otherwise, it's national uh, um, uh, competences. But it's not, it's not that easy because I think it's, it's of the essence to have proper uh, reporting systems to find out if there are uh, people service, uh, that are doing service in the police or uh, could also be in the border guards uh, to find out when there are alleged uh, misconduct 
that it will be investigated properly and that will be a response to that. And that is, of course, the, the responsibility for each member state, and I'm responsible to make sure that we have that also in our EU agencies. But having said that, uh, we have also now recently, as I mentioned, um, proposed a, a boasted mandate for Europol. And there we also put in the possibility for Europol to actually propose uh, uh, starting on an on investigation, even if it's not a cross-border crime, but if it's a crime that has really serious affected towards our core values on the European Union. So this is a new possibility that I have proposed in the new mandate, and that is could be, for example, uh, when there is a, um, a crime that is... Uh, um, that could have a close... Uh, if there are links to... Um, um, a national um, police force and maybe going for a, after a journalist or things like that, these kind of crimes, uh, I'm not proposing a new possibility for Europol to not start an investigation because they can't do that, but to propose, even if it's a, a, a crime that is only committed in one yeah, member state. By border control officers would be one of those crimes? Well, it's for, of course, for, for Europe, Europol to assess uh, that, uh, but it's, uh, I'm opening up a little bit more for these kind of, of uh, um, crimes that could affect the union significantly, even if it's not a cross-border crime. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that, Commissioner Johansson.